Hi everybody and welcome to Coffee, Tea or Sex. I'm Karina Velasco and today we're going to talk about a beautiful practice that it's up and coming with a wonderful friend. I think he's one of the top acro yogis in the world. Like when you see your videos on Instagram, it's pure art mm. and I had the chance to practice with him. We'll talk about it. But Andrew Seely, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Karina. And congrats on this beautiful cover of the magazine. Yeah, the LA Yoga magazine. They're That's really good That's amazing. <laughs> so acro yoga, what, what, why is it getting so popular? What, what are the roots of this practice? Acro yoga started um, with a great friend of mine by the name of Jason Niemer. Him and his girlfriend at the time, Jenny, were really just collaborating and finding new ways of practice between acrobatics and Thai massage. And it just so happened that they decided to come together and create an actual practice that had to do with relationship building, with trust, and was really built on connection. And so from like its roots in around 2006 or so, um, it's really just spread like wildfire. And everyone all over the world is really taking heed to practicing with one another, to really finding that sense of connection that brings us together. And the community, because then you get to play and hang out with a lot of people <laughs> and surrender and trust and, and like you say, create connection with people you don't even know. Exactly, that's the beauty of it is that People are literally coming from different places and entering these acro yoga communities and being able to really trust one another and really connect and find that sense of relatability that allows us to be able to become more vulnerable. And then when we become more vulnerable, we are allowed to let go, to be free, and to truly get beyond just like, you know, this, this skin, this clothes, like what's on the outside and really dig deep into what's inside. So it can also be a, a very uh, spiritual practice, mm -hmm. therapeutic, yeah. it has a lot of benefits. It's very healing, very, very healing practice. It really allows, um, I would say, people to get beyond just like this, you know, this preconceived notion of like, oh, like, you know, when you're on your yoga mat and you're looking at someone next to you, and you're like, oh, goodness, like, I wish I could do that. Or, oh, my goodness, like, oh, I don't know about those pants. I don't know about those shorts. But it really allows us to say, hey, forget all that BS. And we're here to work on something together. Because when you see something beautiful like this, like, there's a sense of connection that has to happen for art to form. You know, and so there's a connection of me bending backwards while at the same time her bending forward so that we can actually counterbalance one another. And it's a connection that allows literally equilibrium between the two of us. Oh, I love that. We need to talk about that. But before, guys, I want to share with you what Andrew does, like check this <laughs> form, form of art that it's so beautiful and we'll be back. <laughs>
Wow, that's, I'm just like, I want to do that. <laughs> so my question is, is acro yoga for everybody? Because I see this and I'm not that flexible. Oh, come on. We, we did some acro yoga before. It's totally for everyone. Yeah? Yeah, I feel that, that the basis of acro yoga is really starting wherever you are because what we're doing is obviously something that's been refined and practiced and you practice with a partner, but it didn't start out like that. Like I had the most inflexible hamstrings ever. And you? Oh yeah, I played competitive soccer at Cal Poly. So I literally grew up you know, playing soccer, running around, and my hamstrings were very tight. So when I first started yoga, I couldn't even sit down. I couldn't touch my toes, and I could barely get into any of the postures that they were presenting. So when it came to now trying acro yoga, this is sometime after my teacher training, I still, it was difficult for me. But knowing that I was working with someone else and that we were there to support each other, that sense of relationship that we built, built a sense of compassion and a sense of actually being able to work with one another so that we both can work together to get the posture. Because mm -hmm. it's one thing when you're doing it yourself and there's no one there to support or to encourage you, yeah. but then it's another thing when someone else is willing to motivate you to go to your extent, to try your best, and to really do something together. And it's like a metaphor <laughs> of life in relationships. Totally. You always, I mean, you can do it on your own, but it's always nice to have that support of your partner. Yeah, they and, say. Yeah, like, you can do it, you mm -hmm. know, like, let me push you, let me support you, and, and you surrender also to that gift of, of receiving that support, which sometimes we don't do that in, in, in everyday life. Mm -hmm. There's a great quote by Rumi, and he says, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, then go together. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, in building up your flexibility, uh, you, you said it was about support, but did you have to start like a daily practice? How can we start first to get connected to our bodies and to increase that flexibility, that strength, and not to be scared mm -hmm. of doing something new? The first step is always just a self-practice because when we practice with ourselves, then we can open ourselves up to practice with others. And I feel that just having it be a daily regimen of waking up in the morning, just like you take a shower. Maybe after you take a shower, when you're putting on your lotion, you do a little stretch, you know? You touch like, your toes. Here's my leg. Exactly, you're like rubbing your back. Oh, I gotta reach over here. My back. Reach over there, you know? You gotta open up your body, get up yeah. in the morning and really feel good about yourself. And I think that little practices like that are really what help to open up my body because when you're rubbing lotion down your leg, you know, you got to get all the way down there to the ankle. So little stretches really do help. Um, even before you go to bed, maybe doing a little child's pose or a little back bend before you get all the way into your rest. And it really helps to relieve stress. So in the morning helps to freshen the mind, wake up the mind, and in the evening helps to relieve the stress before you go to bed so you can have a restful night's sleep. And little tiny practices like that, it's the little things that really compound over time that help you to open up your body so that you can do the amazing postures later. I think it's a little bit like the mind, you know, it's like the more you read and introduce new information, you open your mind to new points of views mm -hmm. and perspective, but we don't have that tendency or that knowledge of really tuning into our body and start opening our body little by little because there's space, you know, there's space uh, in between our connective tissue and there's always a possibility to do something that you never imagine. I think that's the same thing with sports, mm -hmm. with acro yoga. I see this and I'm like, I'm never going to do this. And I've done things <laughs> like when we were doing playing the other day, I was like, oh, I'm doing this. And I checked out the video and it was just amazing. Yeah. So possibilities are infinite of your body, your totally. body's movement. Your possibilities are only limited by your mind. So if the, op the mind opens, then it allows your possibilities of what your body can do to open as well. So what are the things when you started, um, because sometimes I feel a little like competing with yourself. Like mm -hmm. I used to do that in yoga when I was an Ashtanga yogi. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always like, oh, I want to do this. I want to I want to do the Pincha Mayurasana, but I want to put my leg back. Yeah. You know, there, there's always, 
like a task or an objective um, to go to. Does that still happen for you in acro yoga or it's more like flowing with your body? I feel that um, if you think of it in the sense of, it's kind of like we have this, this microcosm of you know, infinite possibilities. Like you see things and then your awareness to those things opens up. So just like in yoga, when you see someone do a posture, then your awareness of, oh my goodness, that's possible, opens up. And then you're like, oh, you know, I might want to try doing that. Same thing with acro yoga. You see something, you're like, oh, I want to try that. Because perhaps if I try that, it will help me to feel the way that that person's feel. Because usually you see someone in a posture and they get out of the posture, ah, oh, you feel amazing, you know? So same thing with acro yoga especially is like you see someone do something, you're like, oh my goodness, oh, okay. I, I want, that looks good. That looks like it feels good. So then you try it and then you realize it does feel good and that's why we do these postures and that's why I feel that there are so many different postures because each one gives you a different feeling. Okay, let's go back to that. Each posture gives you a different feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me, for example, a difference between forward bends and back bends? Oh, totally, yeah. So think of it this way. When we fold in, it's just like when we draw our shoulders in, we're coming into our body. We're coming into our introspective space. We're thinking more about ourselves. We're drawing ourselves closer to our heart. And by doing that, we're actually lowering the blood pressure, right? We're slowing down the breath we're becoming more restful. Like you think of like a, a little baby when they're in a ball, they're resting. Stillness. Yeah, that stillness, that breath. And then when you open up and you're expansive and your arms are spread, your heart is open, you're exciting the breath, you're exciting all of the muscles, the circulation, and therefore that starts to up the heart rate and therefore circulating more blood all around all of the endorphins, all of the, the good stuff that's yeah, in your body is now close. circulating, you know? And so it really helps you to feel more energized. So in the morning you get up and you stretch out, you open up your body, like doing those little things is literally what helps to excite the mind and then to bring forth that fresh perspective on a new day. And also talking about inversions because <sighs> You know, I mean, you're an expert at that. You know, you do some headstands with crazy stuff I have never seen, mm -hmm. to be honest. But it's like we see that in Instagram all the time or in Facebook. And it's like, oh, yeah, they're just like doing the handstands here and there. But there's like a science for inversions. Why are wow. they so important? Yeah, so inversions are what I would say they're kind of like the... <laughs> To put it in layman's terms, they're like the drug of yoga. <laughs> yeah, actually, when I saw your face, it's like it's like and like as Karina like thinking about sex for you like inversions. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> like honestly, sex is pretty close to inversions. I sometimes inversions are better than sex. Really? <laughs> totally. Oh. Totally. There's. Well, um, if, I'm, if I'm I mean, on top of somebody, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, so inversions, when you actually put the spine upside down, it helps to decompress the spine. Mm. So you think of it all day, we're up like this, right? The head is on top of the shoulders, is on top of your torso, is on top of your hips, is on top of your legs, is on top of your feet. So we're turning that upside down. The feet are on top of your ankles are on top of your calves are on top of your legs are on top of your hips and then your whole entire spine gets to decompress oh. because now it's upside down and so the musculature now has to actually operate in like an opposite way so instead of pumping the blood up to the head the blood is already going to the head because you're upside down so now they actually have to pump the blood up to the feet so then you become like hmm all this blood is in your head, all this circulation in your head, you have oxygen in your head. So a really good way to say like during the day, maybe it's like 2.30, you're getting a little tired at your desk, you're sitting at the computer, go up against the wall and do a headstand. Or put your feet like... Yeah, or put your feet up against the wall and just kind of feel it out. Put your hands on the floor, walk your feet up the wall and feel it out, see how you feel. 
It's an amazing way to really build the strength in the shoulders and pushing up to open up the lungs and to really tone the core. Great, great, amazing practice is through inversions. And the inversions feel so good, almost as good as sex. Yeah, because, <laughs> I mean, it, it's clear if we have more oxygen in our brain mm -hmm. that also our thought forms are more positive. We become yes. more creative, more efficient and productive in work. Mm -hmm. That's totally proved, and it, and it supports brain health, right? Totally. It totally supports brain health, and it also supports your circulation throughout your body. So really being able to equalize the blood pressure. And what about wrinkles and all that? Because sometimes when I'm like doing handstands <laughs> and I see myself in the picture, it's like, I don't look very pretty. <laughs> I'm it's, vain. Hey, it's not how it looks, it's how it feels. Oh. That's the basis it's of all of It's not how it this. looks, it's how it feels. Yes. And that's beautiful. I mean, because I see this and it's like, wow, I'm never going to be able to do that. But if I do something similar, like you say, my partner supports me just to be upside down, maybe mm -hmm. with more support, I have the same feeling. Exactly. Because that's I don't have the to do this. No, you don't have to. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I would love to. <laughs> that that does feel amazing too. Um, I'm sure she could tell you. Yeah. She's a good friend of mine, Jen. She's an absolutely wonderful girl, and she's an inversion junkie as well. Like we all do this because it feels so good. But even if you're doing the simplest of acro yoga poses, or even the simplest of yoga poses, you feel the difference, and that's the beauty of it. Well, I'm glad you cleared that out. Now I know why there's so many like people doing handstands on Instagram because you get it's a junkie. Like mm -hmm. you get addicted to the we, good feeling. The good feeling. We're all addicted to things that help us to feel good. And whether it's doing it through, you know, cocaine, marijuana, coffee, tea or sex or yoga, it's all releasing these endorphins and releasing the good energy within our body that helps us to feel good. And so we have these chemical makeups of our body that are very similar. You know, whether you're a man or a woman, whether it's estrogen or testosterone, all of these awesome hormones need to be circulated through your body. Yeah. So it's how you circulate them through your body. Do you choose the yoga or do you choose the sex or do you choose the cocaine and or the drugs, dancing, yeah. you know, or the dancing, you know? So it's like, what can we do to better the efficiency of being able to feel this feeling naturally mm. without all of the extra? Yeah, because once you try this, I mean, I, I, I talk from my own experience. Mm -hmm. Now that I tried this, like yoga, since I started my practice in 2001, mm -hmm. more professionally, although my father was a yogi, yeah. but it, it shifted my life. Like I felt much better, happier, mm -hmm. less grumpy. And also like something interested uh, about the body, like we're used to move our body, like walking like this. I mean, we always move in the same patterns. Yes. And yoga allows you to move and circulate that energy and that flow in different ways and creating space, right? Yeah, creating space to open up. And then when we're able to open up in our bodies, then our mind opens up. So the physical expression on the outside is only an expression that's first related here in your mind. And then once you find it in your mind, it comes out into the physical manifestation of the body. So when you see something like that, that's just a physical manifestation of something that's a thought. Hey, maybe we should get together and try this. Oh, let's do it. Oh, this feels really good. Yeah, like a fantasy, but like manifesting it through the body. Exactly. So we talked already about the brain and the chemistry, which is super important, about mm -hmm. what happens in the body. I want to touch base also in the spiritual like, uh, and the mm. energetics of this practice because it's a holistic practice. That's why I love it so much. Totally. So let's talk about first energy. Yeah, so if we're gonna talk about energy, we must first start at that we're, you know, spirit within bodies, that we're spiritual beings having a physical experience because when it comes down to it, all of this matter around us is just little molecules that are vibrating together, little atoms that are vibrating together, and energy that is literally all part of this source energy that brings us together. So when we can do something like acro yoga, where we're able to touch one another, where we're able to feel, reach out and 
like feel this connection of us being together, this support right here is the start for all types of relationships. So whether it be a friendship, whether it be a platonic, you know, relationship where you're just... So it's a good way to go and do acro yoga to meet like cute guys and girls. I mean, yeah, cute guys, <laughs> cute girls, friends, colleagues. I've made some of the most amazing connections through acro yoga. Some of the people that are my profound people who I trust and like let them come over my house and you know take care of my room while I'm gone traveling or whatever it is. It's like these are people who I can truly trust with my life, especially when you have someone in your hands and you're doing a crazy posture like that. Like you're trusting that person because they have you overhead. Anything could happen, but you're trusting that they have you. And that's the beauty of the practice. Mm -hmm. And when we come back to the spirituality, it's just like trusting that this world has a plan for you, that this, this whole entire beautiful microcosm of life, you have a path and therefore you're on it. So don't be afraid that you're gonna fall because trust in the world and this beautiful person that's supporting you that there is going to be a positive outcome because that's what we're here to do is to trust into the intuition of our lives. And I think uh, an, a, a different way to engage with other people with that base of trust and surrender mm -hmm. and connection and touch, it takes any relationship to another level. So much so. So I much mean, so. that's how we met, you know? <laughs> it's just like we were in Mexico City, I was in a vegan place, and suddenly he got there, and I was with another friend, Mane, who's also an amazing acro yogi, mm -hmm. and we went outside, and they started playing, like, in the middle of Mexico City, and yeah. then we connected, and you're yeah. here, so. It was, it was really interesting, because I, I just went to go visit a good friend of mine, uh, Marcos, and yeah. I taught an acro yoga workshop there, and then my good friend Fabiana was like, oh, you have to come meet some of my friends at this cafe. It's a good vegan spot. I was like, oh, totally. I love vegan food, you know? And so I go to meet her, and there's this acro yoga guy. He's like, I've seen you before. I've seen you do some stuff. I, I know you look familiar. He's like, can you do a hand-to-hand? -hand? And so hand-to-hand, -hand, literally, you're connecting hand-to-hand. -hand. And so when you connect hand-to-hand, -hand, you have to support each other just by your hands. Oh, so, you haven't met with him before? No, with that was my first time meeting him. First time and total trust. Suddenly I saw Andrew, like Mane holding Andrew like this, hand to hand, stand. just in the middle of the street. Yeah, and that's, that's trust, is that you can feel that connection, and if that connection is strong, if that connection is stable, then you can trust that that person has you, that that person has the ability to be able to support you. And then he has to trust me that I have the ability to now support him, being that I'm going to stay strong while I'm up hand to hand on top in a handstand. That's incredible. <laughs> so I'm um, talking about that because usually we see the base and then we see the other person. I don't know. The flyer. The flyer. Yeah, she's right? flying. <laughs> so how do you support each other as a base? And how do you support the base if you're flying? Yeah, like how so, does that work? So the base, the, the goal is to be grounded, to be soft, to be supportive. As you can see in this picture, the, the person's back is all the way on the floor. He's the foundation, right? And the flyer, the goal is to be like the structure, but at the same time, be able to flow fluidly. You can see that she has a back bend, she's reaching her hands forward. She's in a more um, submissive posture in the sense that she's kind of allowing the base to be the foundation while she is flying on top. So it's, it's very similar to sex, you know? There's, there's the person who's on the bottom, usually, and there's a the person who's on the top. Yeah, the surrendering and, and the dominating. Exactly, yeah, and it's, it's, it's a sense of collaboration, and they can switch. So it doesn't have to be a guy that's on the bottom and a girl that's on the top. You can switch. The girl can be on the bottom and the guy can be on the top. And there's women who are bases, amazing bases, all around the world. And there's men who are amazing flyers. And I myself, I love to switch because it's like, the best way for me to learn how to be a supportive base is to be a supportive flyer, mm. right? And by being a supportive flyer, I can then become a more free base. 
right? And so it wow. just goes hand in hand to be able to learn, okay, the more that I can bring a sense of softness and flow into my flying, the more that I can bring that softness and flow into my basing as well. And it's very interesting you, you mentioned this because um, usually I fly a couple of times, like mm -hmm. three, four times, not a lot with amazing acro yogis. I don't know why they, they always <laughs> end up offering me like to fly, yeah, which is great. You have great energy. Thank you. But then, you know, I tried once to be the base. And right now that you're mentioning it, 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 it creates a reflection. You know, I go in, into my inner self, mm -hmm. like this reflection of usually I fly around, you know, I'm an Aquarian, so mm -hmm. I'm like all over the place, like yeah. open to possibilities flying. And I have sometimes a little like struggle with being the, the base, base. The, the foundation to create structure, to be strong holding somebody else. Yes. So I noticed that, <laughs> you know, like something popped up and I started crying and I started you know, like it was therapeutical because it was a reflection of how I relate in life. Mm -hmm. And then when I went flying, you know, it's it's very easy for me to surrender and trust. Yeah. And so you can learn a lot about yourself doing this practice. Totally. It, that's the beauty of it is that we're all here to learn from one another. And when we come together to learn together, we have that sense of being able to release our vulnerability and to be able to become more vulnerable. And through becoming more vulnerable, it allows us to connect. Because we're getting rid of all the other BS. We don't need you know, these preconceived notions or the judgments or any of that kind of stuff. We're seeing each other eye to eye and being able to connect on a cellular level of touch. Mm -hmm. And it's just like when you think of a baby being born, the baby needs a mother's touch. We need each other's touch. The way that we become more at union with our ideas and we can relate to different perspectives is by being able to touch one another and being able to feel and release the tension of our bodies so that we can truly be more healthy, more well, more true in our essence. Because that's the goal, is for all of us to become the truest, most pure version of ourselves that we can be. And there's so many preconceived notions about touching, always linked to sexuality, that yeah. I think it's a great opportunity if you miss that in your life, because we all need to be touched, mm -hmm. to go into this practice. Totally. Where it's, it's totally like boundary-based. Mm -hmm. You can feel safe. You can allow yourself to let go and be touched without feeling uncomfortable exactly. or creepy. And it can open up to that world of like being able to be more intimate. That's, that's the, the whole basis of the practice is trust. And so if you have control and trust issues, <laughs> this is for you, my friend. <laughs> totally, this is. Yeah. And, and the truth of it all is that we are here to be able to trust one another. And by becoming more trustworthy, we can then do things like this because that whole entire movement, that whole entire idea of her literally being supported by my hands, the only way that she can go into the back bend is by me leaning back. And the only way that I can lean back is by her going into the back bend. Oh. So it's, it's this, this continuous ebb and flow of trust, of giving, and then receiving. And like you said, like, if you're scared of touch, if you're afraid to go out there and to really connect, like, you have to ask yourself, why? You know, have you been hurt before? Is there something that happened? Is there someone who was untrustworthy towards you? Um, because the beauty of these communities is that we're practicing on a daily basis how to trust one another, how to become more intuitive in our touch, and how to become more connected by compassion. Mm. So not by the sexuality of things, not by oh, the body image, but releasing all of that because acro yoga is for everyone. I've flown people that are 350 pounds and I've been based by people that are, you know, little kids, 12 years old, and it really is for everyone and that's the beauty of it. Even when you were a little kid and your parents would put you on their feet and put you up in the sky. Yeah, I do that to my nephew and niece all the time. Exactly, it's the same thing. It's the beauty of 
being able to release the inhibitions and be free. And like you say, it's, it's a very real practice in the sense of I can be just me. I can connect. I can let go. If I feel fear, I can express that and communicate that. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I think the beauty of trust and this new uh, disciplines like acro yoga that allow us to shift the way we're relating mm -hmm. is that it's opening to possibilities of how to relate. Yes. You know, it's not the, the, the ones we're used to it. So it's, it's a beautiful practice, very integrative. And I've learned so much, you know, about acro yoga. So yeah. to finish the show, I would like to ask you, mm -hmm. what has been, let's say, the three gifts that this practice has, has given you? Wow. In a deep um, level. I would say the first one definitely has to be community. Because when, whenever I go traveling anywhere, the beauty of my travels is that I get to connect with a new community. And some of those communities I've already been to, I've already experienced them, and it's beautiful to see how they grow. And with acro yoga, those communities are so built on relationships, strong relationships of people really loving each other and seeing each other for who they are. Mm -hmm. Not you know, worried about what types of clothes you're wearing, your background, your culture, your skin. Just playing and playing, enjoying each other. Playing, yeah. being, being the human beings that we're meant to be. The, the truest versions of ourselves through this community um, we literally are able to uplift and empower others to become the most amazing versions of themselves possible. Mm. So the community, I would say, is number one. Um, two, I would say, is uh, connection. Because some of the people that I've met in the Acro Yoga community have literally brought me to where I am today, who have helped me to um, be connected with organizations like LA Yoga Magazine or um, like Wonderlust and all these different uh, festivals and being able to connect with people really allows us to be able to open up new opportunities of our lives and new perspectives mm -hmm. because if you think of it like just as a cell like our goal is to connect like electricity wants to connect people want to connect that's the reason that we're here broadcasting the show for others to feel what we're sharing so connection I think is key to human nature we're meant to connect with one another as as our primordial goal is to recreate that becomes from connection so <laughs> all of it is connected <laughs> and then third I would say is <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah pleasure is good but um, I'd have to say third is, it's really taught me compassion um, because there's so many people who you wouldn't regularly interact with who are in the acro yoga community. There's people who are lawyers, police officers, there's people who are ex-drug addicts, there's people who are, um, have been you know, sexually or mentally abused. and to be able to have compassion for them, to fly them, to be based by them, to be able to share that connection, to be able to share that support is beautiful. Because there's a lot of times that within our own friend groups, we're not open to, oh, you know, those people are like this, so I'm not gonna hang out with them. Yeah. Or you may not even be introduced to someone who has had a sexually abused, but they come into the acro yoga community to be able to be connected with people who understand and relate to true touch. The truth of touch, which is, you know, not having any sexual intention, not having any lustful intention, yeah, but the just nourishing aspect. the nourishing aspect yeah. of healing one another. That's and beautiful. so that, that idea of coming to a pure sense of compassion, knowing that we're here to help one another is, I would say, the third reason that, or the third aspect of acro yoga that has really helped to uplift me well thank you so much for being here andrew mm -hmm. so where can we find you oh you can find me at um, andrew seven Seely um, is my instagram my website um, also 
please make sure to check out. I have a podcast called the Yoga Revealed Podcast. Awesome. So I reveal the most inspirational stories about the most inspirational yogis. And um, we've interviewed people like Jason Niemer, who's the founder of Acro Yoga, so that they can tell their stories about how they got to where they are and how they built beautiful organizations. So yogarevealed.com. Yogarevealed.com. Well, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> and guys, after this, I know you were going to practice this. Yes, so, practice, practice, yeah, practice. Yeah, check, check practice. Acro Yoga out. Yeah. <laughs> Surrender, trust, go play. Go feel good yes. and try something new. It's always good. That's the way. Yeah. And connection comes first. Thank you, my friend. Blessings. Great to see you. Thank you. And great to see you guys. Don't forget to have coffee, tea, or sex tonight. <laughs>